Welcome to Golden Software's video training for Surfer. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surface mapping software package. In this video, I will cover advanced gridding options when using Surfer to interpolate XYZ data. 10 of the 14 map types in Surfer are created from grid files. You can download grid files like DEMs from the internet, produce grid files and other software packages, or you can interpolate irregularly spaced data points with X, Y, and Z values in Surfer to produce a grid file. To grid a data file in Surfer, click Home, Grid Data, Grid Data. In the Dataset 1 section, I will select a data file. To grid a data file in Surfer, the file must contain one column for each X, Y, and Z data, and it must be saved in a supported data file format, such as a text file, a CSV file, or an Excel spreadsheet. If the data was already open in a Surfer worksheet or as a post or base map, we could select the file from the dropdown. Instead, I will click Browse, select the data file, and click Open. In most cases, the default gridding parameters are suitable, and you can simply click Skip to End to create the grid file. However, you can fully customize your gridding options to create the best grid possible for your data. This video will cover some of the more advanced gridding options available when you are gridding in Surfer. In the Data Columns section of the Grid Data dialog, after selecting your X, Y, and Z data columns, you can filter your data to deal with duplicate points or to exclude data. Duplicate data are points with the same X and Y coordinates within specified tolerances. For example, if the tolerance values were set to 0.05, Values of 1 and 1.04 would be considered duplicates. When deciding what to do with duplicate data points, you can choose from various options, such as keeping none of the duplicate data points, keeping only the first point, or keeping an average of all duplicate points. In this dialog, you can also enter a data exclusion filter, so certain data is excluded from gridding. This can be specified for the X, Y, and or Z variable and can exclude data that is above, below, or equal to a defined value. For example, we can enter Z equals negative 999 to exclude any data points with the null Z value of negative 999 from being used during gridding. If you wish to create a statistics report about your data, click the Statistics button and a data statistics report is generated and Surfer will generate a grid data report after gridding is completed. You can save either of these reports by clicking File, Save As in the Report dialog. In the Gridding Method section, once you have selected a gridding method, you can access additional options for the gridding method by clicking the Next button. The advanced options will change depending on what gridding method is selected, but the next page will include a general section, that has gridding method specific options? In some cases, there will be an, an isotrophy section which allows you to specify the ratio and angle for the preferred orientation of the data. Options to create variograms may also be found here. On the left side of the dialog, you will see the model the current settings would create. Once you're satisfied with your changes, click Next. The next page displays additional advanced gridding method options. This page will also look different depending on the gridding method selected. Common options found here include gridding method specific parameters. Search options are below the parameters. By default, none, use all data, is checked if the data has less than 250 points, which means no search is being applied. Uncheck this option to apply a search. On the left side of the dialog, a model of the current search settings are shown over the data point distribution. Whether or not you should use a search depends on how many data points you have. If you have fewer than 250 data points, usually the None Use All Data option is the most appropriate. With this option, the gridding algorithm uses all the data to calculate the grid node Z values. If you have between 250 and 10,000 data points, then the default is to use a search, but you can specify None Use All Data if you want. If you have more than 10,000 data points, you must use a search. The search ellipse defines the shape and size of the searchable area around each grid node used to calculate that grid node's Z value. 
Data points that fall outside of the search ellipse for a grid node are not considered when calculating that grid node's Z value. If no data points fall within the search ellipse, then that grid node is assigned a no data value. The units of the search ellipse are the same as the X and Y units in the data file. The model updates as the ellipse properties are changed. Below this section, there may be a break lines or break lines and fault section which allows you to include a break line or fault file when gridding data. The break lines and fault lines must be saved in a BLN format to use during gridding. Not all gridding methods support both break lines and faults. Some just support break lines and some don't support either. Break lines specify X, Y, and Z values for a change in slope, such as the top of a ridge or the bottom of a riverbed. Surfer sees the fault as a stop when gridding, so it can look around the edges of the fault, but it cannot look across the fault for data. The BLN file can be loaded by clicking the Open File icon in the File Containing Break Lines or File Containing Faults section. Next is the Cross Validation page. Cross Validation is useful for assessing the quality of a gridding method, and this page is included for all gridding methods. On the left side of the page, you will see a model displaying the best fit for the data points. The output page is the last page of the grid data dialog and contains the standard gridding options seen for each gridding method. In the output grid geometry section, you can manually enter the data limits. You can also specify the grid resolution, either by setting the grid spacing or by setting the number of nodes. These two values are tied together so the fewer the grid nodes, the larger the grid spacing, and vice versa. The Grid Z Limits section allows you to limit the Z values in a grid file to a specific minimum and maximum. Some gridding methods can extrapolate the Z values in a grid beyond the range of Z values in the data file, so this is useful for mitigating that if it is not desired. When the minimum and maximum are set to none, this allows the Z range in the grid file to be determined by the gridding method. If you want the Z range in the grid file to exactly match the Z range of the original data file, change the minimum to data min and the maximum to data max. If you would rather limit the Z values in the grid to another set of values, you can change the minimum and or maximum to custom, and then enter the values you wish to use to limit the Z range. For example, I know the values in this grid should never be positive since they're elevation values for Lake Tahoe so I will enter 0 for the custom maximum value. Surfer also offers the option to transform the Z value. If you leave the Z transform set to linear, there is no change to the Z values of the data you are gridding. If you choose log, save as log, the Z values in your data are converted to logarithmic, and the data is gridded and saved with the logarithmic Z values. If you choose log, save as linear, the Z values in your data file are converted to logarithmic, the data is gridded, and then the data are converted back to linear values, and the grid file is saved with the linear Z values. This is useful if your data is logarithmically distributed, but you want to keep the original Z values in the grid file. The two log options are exclusively available for data sets that contain only positive Z values. If you choose to assign no data outside of convex hull of data, there is also the option to inflate or deflate the convex hull. This allows you to add a buffer or a specified distance inside or outside the convex hull of the data. Positive values will enlarge the convex hull, and negative values will shrink the convex hull. The units are the same as the X and Y data units. If you wish to create a report with the information and statistics about your data file and grid file, check the box next to Grid Report. You can choose to add your grid as a layer to a new map, or if a map object already exists, you can add the new map as a layer. You can also choose to create the grid without opening it as a map by unchecking Add Grid Layer 2. You can also specify which layer type you'd like to create with the output grid. Lastly, click the Save Settings button to save these grid settings for future use. You can load these settings in the first page of the Grid Data dialog.
When you are finished setting your gridding parameters, click OK to create the grid file. You will be notified when the grid file is created. If you choose to generate a grid report, it will also appear. And if you choose to open the grid, you will see the map open in the plot window. This grid can be used to create any grid-based map type you desire, calculate volumes and areas, or perform other grid functions. This concludes the video training for advanced gridding options in Surfer. If you have any additional questions, please contact Golden Software.